Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Application and services have common concerns, such as configuration, health checks, metrics, and more, as well as how each service communicates with each other, either directly or through messaging. This is generally implemented by each service using different libraries and SDKs. But is there a way to share these concerns, even if services are using different programming languages and platforms? Well, there is. Let me explain the sidecar and ambassador patterns. I'd like to thank Solus for sponsoring this video. Solus provides a complete event streaming and management platform that makes it easier to design, deploy, and manage event-driven architecture across hybrid, multi-cloud, and IoT environments. For more on Solus, check out the link in the description. Now, whatever platform you're on, you're gonna use different libraries and packages or SDKs to provide these kind of common functionality that you're gonna need. So health checks, configuration, or metrics. Now you're using these libraries and you're leveraging them so you can implement these different concerns that you have. And these are all living within the executable, the process you're running of your service. Now, for example, let's say we have one service that's written in .NET and another service that's written in Go. Well, both services still have these exact same concerns, but again, because we're leveraging the libraries and packages on our platform, we have to do them completely separately. Each service has to implement this. Now, if you're living in a system with a lot of services, even if they're using all the same platform or language, wouldn't it be nice to have a kind of a common way that you can deal with all these shared concerns? So the solution to this is a sidecar. And the idea here is that you take out these common concerns and remove them from your application and house them separately in a sidecar, which is a separate process. Now in kind of our container world nowadays, most times if you read about the sidecar, people refer to it as being a separate container. And while it can be, the real idea here is it's just a separate process that lives locally alongside your main service or app. Now where the name comes from, you guessed it, a motorcycle with a sidecar. And again, because the sidecar is a separate process, it's isolated. That means for whatever you're using it for, let's say configuration, you need to make a change, you're changing it to the sidecar. That has no effect directly on having to restart your application and do some configuration there. That concern is housed separately in isolation in the sidecar. So what this means is we can take out these common concerns such as health checks, maybe as well as config and metrics and whatever else, take out these concerns and push them to this sidecar, which is this separate process. That means that our application is in constant communication with this sidecar for this additional functionality. So what are other types of concerns that we need to deal with? Well, this is oftentimes communicating with other services and fault tolerance. So normally we would have our service directly call our external service, but instead now we can make that request to the sidecar and kind of the sidecar be a proxy. So that means that when it makes a request to the ex external service, what happens if that service is down or there's some type of transient failure? Well, normally we would have to implement our own fault tolerance, say for example, a immediate retry and some type of exponential back off. And we would have to do that for each service that we have, because that's gonna be a concern everywhere. But rather, now that concern of fault tolerance and these retries can be done at the sidecar. So we just make the, made our request to the sidecar and our sidecar deals with that. So then it does the immediate retry, maybe it does some exponential back off, waits, then makes the subs request, that works, and then it can return back to that blocking call to our service. So we remove that concern of kind of fault tolerance and communication with external services. We push that now to the sidecar. So this is the ambassador pattern. It allows us to proxy these requests to something out of process. And that out of process is our sidecar. So it's the one proxying and handling all these requests to other services for us. But you can take this a lot further in terms of abstraction. So if you watch any of my other videos, you know I'm a fan of messaging and loosely coupling between services rather than RPC between them. So let's say we have two different services that are communicating via message broker. Now the thing here in my example is that each one has its own sidecar that's stood up right next uh, to it locally. But that sidecar could be something that we deploy with every service that we have. It's the exact same type of sidecar. And that sidecar can provide the abstraction to the underlying broker. So that means that we could have one instance that say one service that's running .NET and it has that sidecar as well as another service that's running Python and it has its own instance of that sidecar, that exact same type of sidecar that provides the abstraction to, for example, our broker that's supporting AMQP. 
So again, instead of having libraries and SDKs and these concerns about how we're gonna communicate with our underlying broker, all we're really concerned with is communicating with the sidecar in a common way that's gonna be the same for .NET and Python. I wanna say thank you to all the developer level members on YouTube and Patreon. I really do appreciate the support. If you're interested in joining, check out the links in the description. You can get access to a private Discord server to communicate with other like-minded developers about software architecture and design, as well as any source code I show in any video. So if this is a problem you have, or you have many different services that kind of share common concerns in communication, where you want to kind of leverage a sidecar and the ambassador pattern, should you build your own? Well, you could, or you could leverage something like Dapper, which stands for Distributed Application Runtime. So I'm going to kind of run through a little sample, a pub sub sample that does exactly what I was just talking about, just so you can kind of see how this all works. So this example has two different services. Both of them are running .NET but both of them are completely separate processes. So this is the first one, which is just gonna be publishing an event, and then we're gonna have another service that's gonna be consuming and subscribing to get that event. Now, this first one is we're using the Dapper SDK, and there's SDKs for .NET, Go, JavaScript, etc., Python. So what we're doing here is we're building up a new client, and we're using gRPC to specify where that endpoint is, because we're communicating, again, not directly to the broker, but rather we're connecting to the sidecar, and this is where the sidecar lives. I'll show you the process that I'm running that is the sidecar in a second here. And then all we're doing is we're using that SDK to publish an event. So I'm publishing to kind of this channel, which is I just called PubSub, which is our underlying infrastructure, the topic name, and then the order that we're publishing here. And then we're just gonna write this out, wait a second, and then kind of iterate over this 10 times. So this is the consumer. And again, we're just using the SDK for C-sharp and .NET. And if you notice here, this is pretty interesting. If you're familiar with ASP.NET Core, we have this map post, which is where the actual event is being sent to. Because again, we're not picking this up directly from the underlying message broker. Rather, the sidecar doing it and actually sending it to us via HTTP. So this is kind of the method methodology for subscribing to a particular topic. So we're gonna to subscribe to that orders topic. That's where we're publishing them from. We have our order that we're gonna get. I'm just gonna print out uh, when we receive that and then return an okay. So each different service has its own sidecar that's running. So here I have the first Dapper instance running, running the Dapper CLI to run it. And this is gonna be used for the publisher, that first service. And then here's another Dapper CLI running for to stand up our second sidecar that's using for that second service that's gonna be consuming and subscribing to the events. All right, so I'm running different services here. The first one's gonna publish, I added a breakpoint. So we can see once I publish this, we're actually gonna receive it in our separate service that because the sidecar is gonna pick it up and then send it via HTTP to this other service. So I'm gonna step over this and we can see now we're breaking here. So I'm gonna remove both of these and you can see, I'll just show the console how everything gets outputted. There it is, breakpoint, run through. So we can see here that we sent everything, we're sending all of them and receiving all of them. But again, that communication is happening because our publisher is sending it to the sidecar, the sidecar is sending it to the broker and then the sidecar on the other side is picking up that message saying HTTP to our second service to consume it. But again, this is done kind of through this abstraction, this kind of common API that the sidecar provides for both services, regardless of what platform or what type of technology you're using. So why would you want to use kind of this sidecar and ambassador pattern? Well, if you have a lot of services that obviously have these shared common concerns, but your services are kind of in this polyglot world where maybe they're different using different languages and frameworks. Well, this allows you to have that sidecar that's independent and that could be owned by a completely separate team that manages kind of those common concerns and providing those abstractions with something like Dapper to configure how the entire environment is and all the infrastructure. It allows the teams that are managing kind of these individual services and in whatever language and framework that they're using to focus on the application and not kind of these separate technical things or infrastructure things that they need to concern themselves with because that can be dealt separately by a separate team entirely from the sidecar. However, you may be thinking, wow, this is overkill. This is crazy to add all this. Well, it very well could be in your context. If you don't have a system that's comprised of many different services that are kind of polyglot and have different languages and frameworks, then you really don't have this problem that this is trying to solve. So stay clear of it, don't add the complexity. But if you do have this problem, take a look at the sidecar in ambassador patterns. 
If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.